Does it often sound familiar? You're working too many hours. You have no time for me or us. What time are you going to be getting home? Now, are you sitting there thinking, yes, that's me. And yes, believe me, I have been there too and sometimes still struggle with this. But we are only human at the end of the day and we are not always going to be perfect and get it right every time. So stay with me to learn some great strategies on how to try and gain a work-life balance. What does work-life balance actually mean? Well, basically, it is the division of your time between working and family or leisure activities. The idea about this balance is difficult, as you cannot have a universal definition, as it's personal to the individual. What works as one person's balance is often different to the next person, and this is sometimes difficult to grasp when in a personal environment discussing this with friends and family who have different expectations to your own. It tends to be a cycle rather than an achievement. It is a learned behaviour. Life is often changing and one day is very different to the next. Remember what works one day may not be effective for the following day. And always remember the key to achieving this balance relies not just on what you do while you're working, but what you do outside of work as well. Don't start thinking there's always a quick fix that the balance automatically means 50-50 between work and personal life. This may never be achievable and you don't want to set yourself up for a fail straight away as you'll be thinking, why change it if I can't get to that level of balance? Before creating a more balanced life, perhaps first try and understand why work-life balance is important to you. You may remember previously on our video discussing your vision, which includes setting your personal and business goals. If you haven't seen the video on setting your vision, you can find it in the link above. It may be worthwhile at this point to pause the video and revisit or set these goals as these may be crucial to the balanced life you want to achieve and why you want to achieve it. Now, why is it important to have this balance? Well, it defines a healthy workplace. If you're not feeling your best, you will be less productive. As so many people are assessed with time management and the fact that productivity falls short of what they want to achieve, you cannot time manage your way to a work-life balance. But just be warned, creating a more balanced life isn't easy and those people around you may not vision the same balanced life as you do. This process will require you to have courage, mental strength, and resilience. By doing this and acting with courage will give you the results you need. And this will enable you to take control of your career and your personal life. As a business owner or a key team member, this may be you. And in business, this is part of what it takes. On the mission of finding what you want your balance to be, it will require you to think clearly and start to make a list of what is important to you. Think about jumping the rest that is not important. And feel free to pause this video again and have a go at starting to write that list. Does this sound all relatively easy? Well, no, it actually doesn't. When I set about this, I thought, where am I going to start? And as previously mentioned, I went back to my personal and business vision first. And as always, you feel that little tug of guilt at the back of your mind, saying you can't do this. One of the biggest realizations that you need to make to yourself is that you are only one person with one pair of hands and only so many hours in the day. Now, I often joke, why can I not just be cloned? So there can be many of me. However, I do not wish that upon anyone. Now, I am a yes person. So I try to think of the solution around the problem before doubting myself. So I decided to set boundaries. In business, we all have deadlines to meet, orders to fulfill, and sometimes as the deadlines are outside our control. For instance, in the world of accountancy, 
Generally, a filing date cannot be moved as penalties can be issued. Now, we know when these deadlines are due and sometimes outside factors impact on this. However, if another client calls or emails and says, I'm just looking at this, could you please calculate what the potential of this could be? It's urgent. I would normally go, yes, not a problem. I will get that done for you as soon as possible. My as soon as possible could be very different to the client's interpretation of soon as possible. So at the end of the day, when everyone else has gone home to their families or to the pub or to the gym, whatever their balance of life chooses, I'm still at the office calculating the figures for the client. They do not know that I spent an extra two hours that evening working on the figures for them, but my personal life got impacted and my balance was not correct in this instance. Now, after setting boundaries, I have a different approach. Don't worry, it is still not saying no, but it involves a different kind of yes. The conversation now goes, yes, I can get that completed for you, but I have an urgent filing date to meet. However, I can work on this after this work is finished. The latest it will be with you is by the end of tomorrow. Does that work for you? Now you may be thinking this doesn't always work, but more often than not, I find if you're being upfront and honest with people, especially the delivery of the work, then they are far more accommodating with your time scales. And if not, a workaround can generally be met between yourself and the client. I won't lie, you sometimes forget your boundaries that you first set because sometimes guilt creeps in but saying yes in a different way is a skill that is developed over time. So be patient with yourself as small steps will still need to be taken first to start implementing in all future tasks. Also, try set rules for yourself. For instance, if you know the time frame you're most productive during the day, block that time off for work-related activities. Try unplugging for that time frame. Avoid checking emails and switch your phone off at the same time. If you do not feel you can switch your phone off, then switch off notifications. As we are all guilty of keep checking emails and your phone every few minutes, as those are major time-wasting tasks that distract your attention and productivity. By structuring your day, you can increase productivity at work, which can result in more free time to relax outside of work. However you see your balance, start this process by making small changes. Remember, no breaks from work at all creates more stress and you're on the road to a burnout. Now, are you guilty of starting work and carrying on straight through to the time you clock off without a break? If so, these small changes you can implement are definitely for you. Make yourself have lunch and coffee breaks and set a target for a week of how many you will take. Keep record of this. Make sure you take a lunch break away from your workstation, whether that be computer, desk, factory, whichever it is. Once this change has happened, reflect on this. And if you feel you are more productive, try and make that change for every day and see the results you have. Now, when was the last time you had a holiday? Or even when was the last time you had a holiday and did not check your phone, iPad, etc., for emails, work messages, work calls. Sometimes this cannot be helped, especially if you're a business owner or a key team member. Just think how much trouble this got you in with your significant other or family, etc. There are different ways to tackle this. If you're a business owner and you cannot fully walk away from your business contacts, try and agree a specific point of time in your holiday to deal with them. This stops you from stressing out about what you have got to deal with when you get back and lessen any tension with them at the same time. Most or nearly all of the time, it is not a life or death situation. The contacts can always wait until you are back. Now remember, setting expectations of your work-life balance will not always agree with your closest loved ones. Have that discussion with them of what their expectations are too. This should hopefully relieve stress in the relationship and the communication will help resolve any misunderstandings of each other's expectations. Ironing these out now will save you grief in the future. A less stressed, mentally and physically you 
creates better engagement within your relationships, along with better productivity and creativeness. As relationships with family, friends and loved ones are by far the greatest source of inner satisfaction. A balanced life means balanced relationships all round. There is a ripple effect when things become positive about your life, your career, and even your work relationships. Now, I hope you are finding this video useful so far. If so, then we'd really appreciate it if you click the like button below. And if you're not already, subscribe to our channel to make it easier to find our content in future. You can also click on the bell icon if you'd like to receive notifications when we post a new video. How many of you have been on a long working day? You hadn't planned your food for the evening. The gym class you're going to attend but missed. Well, it will still be on next week. Oh, and that bottle of wine with the company that takeaway food you just ordered very nicely. Your mind is still racing from the busy work day. It seems to focus on all the things you haven't done rather than taking the time to think what you have achieved. I can't go to bed early, I've only just eaten. And so bedtime falls into the early hours of the morning. Alarm goes off and you get up and repeat the same thing again tomorrow. It's a vicious cycle. We've all fallen foul of at some point. If you have experienced this, we'd love you to comment below about the situation you've been in and any key change that you made to stop this cycle is this may help others that are in this situation. By setting your boundaries should ease you into finishing work on time, which should link with your balance and making the right choices once you finish work. That thought process isn't enough though. Make a list of all the fun things you like to do outside of work. Can you remember these? How they used to make you feel? I can see that smile now. Now remember that thought and try and use that thought when you feel that you're about to break those boundaries. You may not fit everything into one week that you enjoy doing. So a schedule these may happen over a period of time. Now most recent studies identifies that stress and work burnout is rated the highest denominator in workplace health issues. Due to this, health and mental wellbeing has been discussed far more than it ever used to be, or people have more of an awareness of it now, especially with world events in the last couple of years. By your balance being out, your mental and physical health does suffer. You should have less stress and burnout from creating this balance, which is good for your mental well-being. Also, block out some time that's devoted entirely to your friends and family. Make sure that those closest to you are on board at the same time, making it a priority too. Or if time still remains limited, you can take this time to message or call those. This could be a time for reflection on how big you want your circle to be and how much time you can devote to these. By spreading yourself too thin amongst these may stress you out more as you feel you are not enough to fulfil the relationship you would want. And always remember, downtime is for yourself. So make sure in your downtime, you have plenty of self-care planned as well. Try aim for at least 30 minutes a day of uninterrupted you time. This is trying to do something completely different to your work role. I have recently taken up colouring again, which I used to enjoy when I was younger. This gives me time away from the screen and away from any thoughts, from work or any other stresses. The idea of work-life balance is often diverse. Remember, what works for you may not work for others. There are varied definitions for the balance and what it should be, but if you can make at least one positive change at a time to work towards that balance working better for you, then you have started that journey of a more positive balance, which in turn will make life a little bit happier within your work and personal life. Never beat yourself up because you haven't stuck to your work-life balance. Just evaluate what happened and learn from it. This is a learning process after all, to make you feel less stressed and more productive. You only get one life, so try living it to its fullest. Now, thanks for watching. I hope this video has been useful to you. And don't forget to leave a comment about a key change that you have managed to make. And remember, sometimes just one thing is all it takes. 
Hope to see you soon.